Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your calculator or define curl of a vector field on your calculator so that you can um, just type in the vector field and use the function, and it's really quick. Um, so it's a little bit weird. Uh, it's going to be in a calculator page. And first, I'm going to name the function. So I'm just going to call it curl. And I'm going to say it's the curl of f. And f is going to be my vector field. So I'm going to feed this uh, function a vector. Um, and so now it's colon equals, and we're going to type it in. It's pretty terrible. So uh, first thing is we start a vector because curl is a vector. It's like this, and we can't really, or at least I don't know exactly how I would type it in as a cross product, which would be perfect. So instead I've done the cross product, and I'm going to type in the result. So here it goes. It's a lot of stuff. Um, first, we want a derivative with respect to y of, and so this syntax is going to be strange. So f is going to be a, um, it's a vector, but the calculator looks at it as just an array, and it's a, it's got one row and three columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative with respect to y of f, and then it looks like you're starting another vector, and you're going to tell it the position of the thing that you want to take the derivative with respect to y. So it's in row one, column three. And if you work it out, so we're, we're doing um, partial y of the z component. And then I want to do minus, and it's going to be another derivative, this time with respect to z, and it's f. And in this case, it's in row 1, column 2. Okay, and that's the first component of the curl. So that's the, the i component or the x component, whatever you want to call it. And now we need the j component. So the j component always starts with that negative sign that people forget. So it's minus, then I'm going to open a parenthesis, and now I'm going to type it in. So it's the derivative with respect to x of f, and then I want to take the derivative with respect to x of the thing that's in row 1, column 3, and then I'm going to subtract from that the derivative with respect to z of the thing that is, um, so of f, but the thing that's in row one, column one. So one, one. And then make sure out of all those parentheses, but still inside the vector, do a comma. And now we want the k part. So it's the derivative with respect to x of f and the thing, so looks like you're starting a vector again that's in row one, column two, and then minus, so I gotta get out of this parenthesis, minus the derivative. So you might need to slow this video down to follow along, but that's okay. Um, F, and then the thing that is in row one, column one. This is actually typed out in the notes on page nine, if you go get the notes at, at my website. Um, I'm going to press enter, and hopefully I don't get any errors, and hopefully this worked. So we got that. Okay, so uh, let's see how you use it. So you can then just, uh, it's in the var key, so curl, and you have to give it a vector. So curl of, um, I don't know, I don't really have an example handy, let's see. Uh, well, let's just do x squared comma y squared comma, I don't know, z minus 2x times y. It's really important that you use multiplication between variables on these sorts of things. And press enter, and it spits out the curl. Um, and that's pretty useful, uh, because finding curl, definitely typing it all in is a nightmare. But once you have it in there once, you can just use it over and over. So here's an example from the notes. We're trying to show this is conservative, so I should get 0 here. Um, it's, uh, nope, didn't want that, escape, it's, e what? I did want that, okay. No, I didn't want that. Okay, here we go, e to the x. e to the x, cosine of y, plus, now it's y times z, comma, x times z, minus e to the x, sine of y, comma, x times y, plus z. All right, so this curl should be zero because this is supposed to be a conservative vector field. So let's see. There you go. All right, so you can use it over and over again. 
uh, you could uh, define it and then put it in my library and make it available in all your documents. Probably a good idea. Um, all right, it's up to you what you do with it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.